This is gonna cover and compare different types of methods for joining copper. This is not a how-to video. It's just gonna be a precursor. Later, we're gonna get into how to do a lot of these different things, but now it's just giving you an introduction. When a refrigerant piping, we want it to be clean, dry, and tight. Clean, meaning no shavings, no dirt, no contaminants. Dry, meaning we dehydrate, we pull all the moisture out, and tight, meaning there's no leaks. So we'll start off with our connection. Here we have our connection point and our pipe. Now this looks like clean, shiny copper, but it still needs to be a standard. It needs to be really in good shape. And we use a brush, a wire brush that goes in here that cleans that as well. Then when these two pieces go together, it goes deep into the joint and also it's tight. This makes a very nice tight connection. Sometimes these connections will be old or they get loose. And when that loose connection, it doesn't make a very good braze joint. Next thing is we use our torch and for brazing it's going to be a much higher temperature we heat the pipe first heating the pipe causes the pipe here to expand inside of this fitting that makes for a tighter joint and the heat's traveling inside then we move the torch over here to this side of the fitting the hot copper is what melts this brazing rod a lot of techs will try to put the melt the brazing rod onto it with the torch and that's not the idea the idea is the copper itself is hot enough that when we put this brazing rod on it will melt and also the brazing rod will go towards the flame. So the flame is over here. The brazing rod, as it melts against here, it travels between these two pieces of metal with capillary action towards the flame. And we do that all the way around. So we want that brazing rod pulled all the way inside of here. And then also we want to make sure we then smooth this edge out, smooth the end out here. So it's a two-part process. While we're doing this, we have to be running nitrogen through because as we put that hot flame in here, we end up with what we call oxidation and that oxidation the oxygen from the air oxidizes and ends up flaking on the side of this now that's happening on the outside which we don't really care about but it also happened on the inside and that oxidation on the inside clogs up txvs it clogs up those screens it clogs up solenoid valves it clogs up all kinds of stuff in the refrigeration system so we want to run nitrogen through just a very small amount not even a psi through while we're brazing and that prevents oxidation on the inside I don't have everything with me to make that video. We will do it later. I'm going to link a video in the description so you can see what it looks like brazing with versus without nitrogen. These fittings are nice and tight. Once we sand this end here and then we brush that in, we'd be ready to braze that. So let's take a look at some other fittings. And this is the brazing rod we use. I like to use 15% brazing rod. It's 15% silver. That 15% silver brazing rod is a really high quality braze. The rest of this is made of phosphorus. So we don't need any kind of flux on here because the phosphorus acts as that flux. But also don't put this in your mouth because the phosphorus can be poisonous. Let's take a look at some of this. Here is a braze connection right here. And there's two things we're looking for. We want to make sure the brazing rod is pulled up deep inside that joint. And we want it to be smooth on the outside. Now the primary is it needs to be deep into the joint. I like this edge to be smoothed out for two purposes. One, that's your insurance, that it's not going to leak, and it's your signature. Pulling it into the joint is primary and should be done first. And you can usually see on the outside, see how this discoloration is all the way around? That usually means it was pulled in really deep. And here we can see it's not real smooth on the outside, but you can tell it's all completely covered and coated. It's not going to leak. On the other side, this one is done almost identical. You can see the braze. This is done smooth. Right here it's a smooth end. You can't feel where the two pieces are. Here's that new one, and we can see that there's a definite end. You can feel the two pieces of metal. Where here, it's smooth. All the way, it's a smooth connection. So I cut this open into 45, and we can see it's nice, clean copper all the way through. This copper is one piece because it's been brazed together. Even when I cut it and sliced it, it did not come apart because it is very well done. It's sealed all the way through to the end of the joint. From the start of the joint all the way to the end of the joint this one right here we can tell that it was pulled in pretty far which sounds good except oh here we have this gap over here it's only pulled in a little bit here here it's pulled in pretty far to the joint down so it's not consistent how far it pulled it in I want to see this pulled in all the way back all the way around this joint that's our main braze then the insurance if we look here there's a defining edge right here and there's even a gap inside there you could put a fingernail inside of there or a toothpick inside of there so that's not, a, no insurance there, and it doesn't give us any uh, signature. The signature is that looks sloppy. So I would not trust this braze joint here. So let's cut it open and see what it looks like. So once we cut this open, 
we can see that we have a defining gap right here. See that crack all the way around? There is no brazing rod. So the brazing rod didn't make it all the way to the end, except for right here. See, it looks like it's one solid piece. That's where we see here where it pulled it all the way into the edge. Uh, that's great, but all this rest of it is a very poor brace. Also, it's not going to show up on the camera, but inside it right here, there's tons and tons of oxidation. That oxidation is going to be an issue because it's going to travel through the system. In the old days, when we had aquabenzaline and mineral oil, this system used R22 and it had aquabenzaline oil in it. The reason that's important is because here you can see the oxidation left on from brazing. Well, the aquabenzaline oil and the mineral oil didn't affect it. It pretty much left most of it there. Now, some of it would still travel off, and flake off, but most of it stayed right here where is that. But the new refrigerant, 410A, uses a PLE oil, polyester oil. That polyester oil will clean all of this off, and if you were looking here, it would be shiny inside. But all of that oxidation gets stripped off of here and carries through the system, through all those small parts of the system. So poor braze, there was no nitrogen ran on this system while it was braze, although it was mineral oil, so it didn't matter so much, but they didn't pull it all the way through, and they didn't in the ends right here. But just things to start identifying. If we take a look at this one, this is nice because they have it really smooth. Oh, this is beautiful right here. See how smooth it is from one side to the other? It's like an on-ramp. Now, a lot of bosses don't like that because they say it's a waste of brazen rod, but I like that. That's, that's nice. I really like it all the way around. And there's a little bit of a gap here, but it's, it's smooth all the way around. The problem is it doesn't look like they pulled it in very deep at all. If we see here, it's really shallow. So all of this, as nice as that looks, is irrelevant because it wasn't truly brazed. It wasn't pulled up into the joint. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this up. Let's see what it looks like. So cut this one open and I kind of butchered it a bit because I wanted you to see where the joint was pulled in. Here's our braze connection. Here's the end of that joint. And all the way up in here, there's nothing there. That was just able to pull away right there. Not a drop of brazen rod at all. And we can still see that crack, which means there's nothing there. So it's only held right here in this area, just right here at the connection. So while it looked really good, there's a really poor braze, nothing holding it together. Now, that may hold, but we're not looking to just make it hold for now. We want to make sure it holds 10 years from now. We want to make sure it holds if the unit gets bumped or pushed or has vibrations, it's still going to hold. So these are some of the things we look for in a braze connection. Here's the other side of that fitting. You see there's nothing back here on the end of the joint, and there's just nothing connecting it here at all. The only place it's solid, we can see this line cracks here on both sides. The only place it's solid is right here at the end which is right here at this braze joint. So we just don't like that. So we can see here that there's this blob here. This is most likely in the bottom side. And over here, see how it's all rough? I mean, there is a bit of a smoothness here, but it's just rough. And right here, we specifically see these spots. What caused that is directly from applying the brazing rod here and also having the flame here. So the flame was melting the brazing rod. Remember, our flame should be over here and the brazing rod's over here. So the metal, the hot metal is what's melting the brazing rod, and then that brazing rod should stay on this side, so the brazing rod travels between these two joints. So here they actually put the brazing rod on this side. So they are probably trying to make it look like they pulled it into the joint, even though they weren't. So all that blobs right there, they were just a, a bad braze. And some people say, well, my braze may look bad, but it's a good braze. Let's cut it open and find out. So in this one, the top major shortage on it. It's pulled up, let's say, right about halfway. On the bottom, it was pulled up all the way. We can see here, I can see it on the outside, but it's pulled all the way in. When I put my tool there, it would not separate. So the bottom side, it pulled it in all the way. The top side fell way short. And we can see the same thing here. This top side here is very short. The bottom was solid all the way through to the very end. So the bottom did great. Top was definitely lacking. Now this one we have the blob. So this blob was most likely in the bottom. But what we can look and see here is there's a gap here. Now they feel they did a good job trying to fill it. But there's still definitely a ledge there. The bottom is solid. Now, a lot of people get worried about this. I'm not real worried about that. It's just a waste of product, an extra bit. Over time, you'll get used to not having that. I'm more concerned about having a leak. So we got that on the bottom, but over here on the top, there's nothing. There's a, a definite change right here. You can feel that edge. So what I want to see is less heat. They've got this one too hot. They got it so hot, all the brazing rod was turning to a liquid, and it was just falling down here to the bottom. So they were never able to fill this gap right here because it kept flowing away. Now the question is, how far in did the brazing rod go? If they were getting it too hot, was it able to get all the way to the back? 
and not uh, and not liquidize away. And also, if we look at this, we can see how this pipe straight, and this pipe comes in at a bit of an angle. So it tells me that getting hot, it caused those pipes to pull away from each other, which left a gap here. That gap is harder to leak and a higher chance or higher risk of having a leak. So next we're going to look at this one. And this one we can see, this is a coupling, so one goes in both sides. But there's a whole lot of these little rough spots. It almost looks like uh, goosebumps almost. Well, I can tell that, just from experience, is from overheating. So as they were brazing on this, they just got it too hot. The whole entire connection just got too hot. And they did a good effort trying to fill it. So this is probably the bottom side of this ball is here. But uh, when you get it too hot, the brazing rod, this brazing rod actually starts to boil. It starts to uh, evaporate. And as it does, it leaves bubbles and impurities. On this side here, we can see that it's solid there. But there is that little bit of a ledge right here. I like that to be smooth and pulled in. But let's cut it open and see what it looks like. So even though it's too hot on the outside, inside it seems to be good. I see no separations at all. Um, I don't see any brazen right here, so it wasn't pulled maybe all the way in, but you can see it's pretty close. Silver all the way. And had it not been brazed very well when I cut this, both pieces, or one of the pieces at least, would have fallen completely out. So this is the braze. Try not to get it too hot though. When you get the brazen rod too hot and it starts to boil or bubble, it doesn't make for a good braze. It weakens that brazing rod. Also, you want to make sure you get the pipe hot enough. If you don't get the pipe hot enough, the brazing rod won't flow. So I typically find people teach one way or the other. I've had people want the pipe to get super hot just because they've had too much experience with people not getting it hot enough. And other people that tell them to teach it the other way so they don't end up getting it hot enough because they've seen people get it overheated. So it takes practice. Over time, you're going to get good, but use this now and start looking at copper fittings, the braze points between the condensing unit and the evaporator coils. You can do this without having to open any system. You can walk around businesses, apartment complexes, just take a look at it, look at your own system, and you can start identifying these different types of brazes. Here we can see this one. You can't even tell right here. You can just barely tell where the coupling is on this. So this one's the brazing rods pulled all the way back. They used a ton of extra brazing rod. And inside, we don't see that there's any kind of a blockage in there. So that's that's good. That's fine with me. I am okay, personally, using excess brazing rod as long as it doesn't build up on the inside. Uh, as long as that's not going to leak and it's not going to be a callback. If you take a look at this one, we got this big blob here. And there is a little bit of an edge right here. So it makes me wonder how well it's done. The only way we would know is we can cut it open. We can't really tell how far back it pulled it up inside. So uh, once we cut it open, we'll know, but my fear is that it probably isn't pulled in all the way. We take a look at this one. Tons of extra brazing rod. And the thing that worries me is my joint is right here, but I have brazing rod way over here. So it makes me wonder, the person that brazed this, did they put their brazing rod way over here instead of right in the joint? Also, this joint is very shallow. It wasn't swaged very deep. So I like to see a nice deep swage and the brazing rod pulled all the way. Now these markings right here do indicate that it's most likely pulled all the way into the joint. So once we cut that open, we can see there's brazing rod all the way to the very end, but it didn't fill up the pipe, so they pulled this all the way in, so that's good. So it's kind of blobbed up here, but at least it was pulled all the way deep into the pipe, and that's what we ultimately want. This one is done really nice. It's the braze is smooth all the way on the edge, and more importantly, we can see it's pulled all the way in. It's pulled in very deep inside the joint. So we don't need to cut this one open because we can already tell it's in really, really good shape. And on this other side as well, we can see the same thing. See how smooth it is? Now that's just the insurance and signature. The true braze is where we can see here. It's pulled in deep into the joint. That's what we want. It's a good solid braze. So we don't have to cut this one open because we can tell it's already done good. I can tell there's a little bit of overheating on it, but not bad. Now these on the sides, these kinks are another story, a whole other issue. Take a quick review. We want to make sure that the braze is done. The pipes are cleaned both inside and out when it's pushed together. It needs to be a good tight fit and pulled in deep into that joint. We also want to make sure that when we're brazing, we have we heat this pipe first. Then we move the flame over here to the back of the coupling. And we let capillary action. We put our brazing rod here on this side. The hot metal melts the brazing rod and it's going to pull inside the joint with capillary action towards that flame. So when it pulled in deep all the way around, you do that first. Then you can come back, you can control your heat and you can smooth out this edge with the brazing rod. So the brazing rod only goes right here. We do not want the brazing rod on this side. We want it right here. 
and you'll see it moving over. Once we get to the brazing section, I'm going to show you how to set up the tanks, the torch. Right now it's just an introductory so you can see about it. And the biggest thing is we want to make sure that we're purging with nitrogen while we braze. And that flow of nitrogen is going to prevent this oxidation. Oxidation is going to cause tons of problems. So a lot of people don't like to flow nitrogen because they didn't have to back when it was mineral oil. But now that we use POE oil, it will literally clean all that oxidation off. And that's going to get traveling through the system, get clogged up in the filter dryers, orifices, TXVs, everywhere. So brazing with nitrogen is very, very important. Probably the most overlooked step of brazing is brazing with nitrogen. Uh, one last thing, you got to make sure you protect whatever you're brazing there. So this valve, if I'm brazing right here, I need to put some kind of wet rags or heat absorbing paste. There's a few different options we have. We have literally a wet rag. We can use this product called wet rag. It's a reusable heat absorbing paste. And we can also use a thermal trap, the thermal trap paste right here. This, we can blob this on these fittings and that will make sure that we keep them protected. Good shape. Toothpaste, but it's heat absorbing paste. Don't overheat fittings. Purge with nitrogen. Good solid connection. Clean connection. Brazed, pulling it deep into the joint and then smoothing out the edge as your signature and insurance.